I'm about to show you how I made this blackboard right here. I actually love it right now, but I didn't love it all the way through as I was making it because there were some nuances that I didn't know about. And I was thinking that maybe you would like to know all the details of how to make one. Mine is framed. It is five feet across by six feet down. So it is a giant thing you cannot miss. My name is Cynthia and in this channel we talk about all the things that have to do with home and garden and we are talking about making blackboard walls. This is the kitchen area of my home. It's actually like a multi, right? It's kitchen, dining, living room area and here it is. So I've clearly made a big piece of artwork is what I'm calling it. I had gone into a market and saw this frame and I originally was gonna hang it on the wall, but then I decided to make it right on the wall. So step one was to make my frame, which you will make yours. And so you will decide what size you want it. I wanted mine five feet across by six feet down. And I did two horizontal pieces and two vertical pieces, cut them straight edge first, and then after that, I went ahead and cut the 45 degree angles on all the sides. When I get ready to put together the frame, I always get confused and it messes with my mind about how you're supposed to cut them. So I figured out an easy way to cut them and I'm going to show you how so that it's easy for you as well. All right. So you're going to cut your pieces so the 45 degrees are always like this on all sides. So the these are six feet for example and these are five feet okay and then at the end when you put them together it basically goes like this right so you have your 45 degree angles here and then when you come this way oops you go this way and then you go this way and then you go this way okay do you see that? Basically, that's why you cut them all the 45 degrees going this way. I hope that helps because in my mind it was a little bit like tricky. So that just makes it easier for me. So here is the frame. And before I actually put it together, I went ahead and painted it. And then step two is to measure and prep the wall. Um, because now you're going to put masking tape. So we're going to measure where the inside part is going to be. I put uh, level marks, um, making like a square of all the parts that needed to be painted black. So inside of the square. And I painted kind of in the middle of the board so that, um, you know, when you put the uh, paint, it was like a clean, smooth line. Like you wouldn't be able to see white at all and also don't use this kind of tape i happen to not have the other tape and i had this one but the other blue or green tapes are so much better i use them all the time for painting i just was out i happen to have this because i had it for another project but i normally don't i took a 220 grit sandpaper and i started to try to smooth out as many of the little imperfections on the wall as possible because step three is to paint a lot and when i mean a lot i mean a whole lot when you start painting, this is going to feel awkward. It feels very much like oil paint and it is just the most awkward paint you will ever encounter. I've painted a gazillion things in my lifetime and this paint is by far the most weird uh, feeling kind of paint and it leaves so many streaks at first. You need to wait about four hours between coats. Um, so I waited four hours and then I put the second coat, which really didn't feel much better. I was really still freaking out because it did not look any better at all on the second one. It still looks streaky. It was still hard to paint. It's just yucky. Even the way it, the paint is on your fingers, um, it's hard to clean off of your fingers. It's just kind of very different and I wasn't used to this. But I wish somebody had told me to just hold off and keep painting because I, I might have just quit at this point. I was so freaked out about what I had just done to my wall and that I wanted to quit. But don't. Don't I'm do that. I just brewed my morning coffee and I'm sitting here wondering if I have made the biggest mistake ever. I thought about that all night last night because... Just not sure how I feel about this shiny, uneven mess. So this is two coats. Look, you can even see my 
shadow. It's so reflective and it is just so uneven. So this is two coats. You have to wait four hours between coats. And so yesterday I waited four hours and did the second coat. Today I'm doing a third, probably a fourth. And if I can squeeze in a fifth, maybe. If I can't, then I'll wait till tomorrow. Then you're supposed to let it cure for three days. Then you're supposed to prep the chalk. I hope this shiny crap goes away. It was not until this third coat that I actually started feeling better. Third coat meant it started to get a little bit darker, a little bit more even, but it was still not completely even. You could still see a lot of streaks. You could still see that three coats was not gonna be it. This is coat two, coat three. Shiny, shiny though. <sighs> This definitely looks black. A lot of the streaks have gone. The shininess is still strong. You know how you start reading online when you freak out about something? So I did, and people said that they went ahead and sanded between coats. So I sanded between after my third coat to see if it would be better for the fourth one. In all honesty, it did not help at all. I didn't need to sand between coats, and you don't need to do that because the fourth coat uh looked better but it, it's not like the sanding part really helped i ended up giving it five coats and felt that it looked better and i finally took off the tape in hindsight i probably should have done a sixth coat and i read someone online did a seventh coat so if you have to go six or seven to feel really good about your blackboard do it it's been three days that the wall has dried that's what the instructions on the can said so now i have to cure it and that means i'm going to get regular chalk that cheap chalk you can buy anywhere and put it sideways and then go all the way through the board and then clean it off i used three chalk pieces to finish covering this all up and now that i'm done this is what it looks like and now it is time to clean it all up hopefully this works Do you see all those chalk particles everywhere? <laughs> they were everywhere in the house. Obviously, as you can tell from how it's erasing right now, this was not the only passing that I did. It took me a while to get it done, so get ready to put some elbow grease into this. And get ready to clean up your house and yourself. Then later, when I wanted to make it look a little neater, I took a piece of paper towel and wrapped up my eraser. Um, so that I could make it even neater. But that chalk is still flying everywhere. It will definitely start looking better with time, but it's going to require patience. Here is my very first attempt at trying to see if it worked. And I'm going to shamelessly say, if you like this, go ahead and subscribe. And as you can see, it erases just fine, so it works. So now it was time to assemble the frame and the easiest way for me to do that with wood is using a Craig jig. If you don't have a Craig jig, I highly suggest getting one because this thing has helped me through so many projects. I spent a little over $30 and it has helped me do so many things. I've gotten my money's worth and then some. I had actually worked on this on the corners. I had put a little bit of spackle and had painted all through it so it looked a little bit smoother. Then when I was done, um, we actually put it in. So this is Manny helping us put it in, but then my husband came in to help us as well because I think three people is the best way to put a big frame like this on the wall. Two people were holding it, my husband and, and his cousin, and then I was actually leveling it and making sure that the um, screws went into um, the studs. So of course we used a stud finder to find the studs so that the wood had something to grip on. And I always like to double check by tapping with a nail and a hammer to make sure that we've hit on wood. Then it was just a matter of making sure everything was screwed in and safely secured. And then of course we had to cover the holes and repaint that area so that it looked nice and neat. This was actually sample writing that I used to practice, but actually if you see the top and right there, there's some dark spots. Those are because I took a wet rag and I cleaned it off, but those areas have to be re-cured before you write on it again. 
So here I am erasing it and getting it ready for the artwork that actually was going to stay. So there I am recurring it. And now you're going to see my little artwork. So hopefully I've given you enough information for you to decide whether you are inspired to put one on your wall, maybe to put one on a piece of wood and hang it up or whatever it is you do. Because remember guys, you can create bliss at home and in the garden. 